While Dan Burns excelled in the world of mall management and renovations, his passion for water and the outdoors compelled him to switch gears from malls to marinas. He and his wife Kathleen began by partnering on ownership of a Maryland marina, which they managed for seven years. From there, they moved up to a family-owned marina in Connecticut at the mouth of the Mystic River, where over the ensuing 17 years, they established a stellar reputation in the industry. At that point, Dan thought he was headed toward retirement, until he saw a help-wanted ad that piqued his interest and changed his life. It's right on the mouth of the Mystic River, right off of Long Island Sound in Noank, Connecticut. Beautiful. The owners were a family, one, two brothers and a sister. They wanted to renovate the, the property, put new docks in, et cetera, et cetera. And they gave us complete leeway, you know, with supervision, but complete leeway to completely turn around their property, and we did. How and long we, did you stay there? 16 years. Wow, that's a career. Yeah, we took it from a property that was doing about a million seven in revenues to almost a little over six million in revenues. How did you do that? Worked hard, hired the right people. What does it take though? I mean, what, what do you have to offer people? Because as you said, there's a lot of water in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming there's a lot of marinas, small and large, oh, yeah. that give people the opportunity there's 14 to work There's 14 immediately in that area. So what did you do to make your marina come above the rest? Well, again, we, we treated it, we treated the marina as well as the people in the marina as if they were at a hotel. We were the concierge. We were available. We were consistent. Our pricing we reorganized. We didn't charge one person one price and another person another. Uh, we stayed very, very consistent. We hired good techs or mechanics. We did really good work. Uh, we did it on time. We were honest, straightforward, uh, and that's what it takes. We had a lot of high-end, high-quality customers that had houses in Fishers Island, New York, which was right, you can see it from No Rank. It's a mile and a half away. And they kept their boats with us and for us to take care of. And we had about, about 15 of those customers and they were top quality, high-end boats. They weren't the kind that you would live on. Okay. They were more the sport fish style and the, and the cruiser style, but high-end. I mean, one of the customers had, in that 16-year period, had had three boats, and not a single one of them was worth less than a million dollars. And then we had one of our customers buy a 145-foot motor yacht and spend forty-one million on it. And was that kept in your marina? It was there part time. The boat that size doesn't stay in Connecticut all year round. So what did happen to the boats? Did you take care of them in the winter as well? Yes, we stored them. We we had slips, and moorings, and we stored them both inside and outside for the winter season. It sounds like you really enjoyed your time there. I did. I still live there. You still live there? Well, not at the marina, but in Connecticut. In Connecticut. Yeah. So if you enjoyed it so much and you did a great job and made the, made the marina more successful, why did you leave? The family wanted their children, to, to, who had grown up through that 16-year period, to manage the marinas and didn't need us to continue. Was that insulting in any way or hurtful? Yeah. What it is. Yeah, it is what it is. The were we disappointed? Lurch. Yes, yeah. we were disappointed, yes. So, once again, we're now on a job search or a career opportunity. How's that? Correct. Career opportunity. Continuing a career. But you think you want to stay in the marina business? I like the marina business, yes. And what about Kathleen? She is actually still in the boating business as well. She is the executive director of the Connecticut Marine Trades Association. Which is what? It's an association representing all of the marine businesses within the state of Connecticut. She's also the producer of the Hartford, Connecticut Boat Show. I don't imagine that spun right out of that 16 years, did it? Did she immediately land those two positions? No, it wasn't immediate, but, okay. but it was within six months. And what about you? I had kind of initially thought that I would 
be retired, but I didn't like retirement. How long did you try it? About a year and a half. What did you do in that year and a half? I worked at part-time at a golf course, played a lot of golf, did some boating, did yard work and housework. I drove for Uber for a while to fill in some time, yeah. Did you enjoy that? Yeah, it was fun. Meet a lot of neat people. You just like the Energizer Bunny. You just keep moving. It doesn't really matter necessarily what it is. If it's enjoyable and you get to meet people, you just keep right on moving. That's a, that's kind of the way I like to keep it, yes. So why not just continue that little bit here, a little bit there? Well, I saw this ad for, for this property. Okay, so uh, let's back up. What's this property? Wharf Gangplank Marina is a small portion of the Wharf development project, it, which is a two billion plus development project, which is involving office buildings, three hotels, high-end condominium, apartment buildings, restaurants, retail, and then the marina, park areas. It's a mile-long development on the waterfront here in Washington, D.C. I just started here in February of 2016. What are you hired to do here? Hired as the general manager to manage the existing live aboard boat community that is here at the Gangplank Marina. Nothing to do with the development and construction? No. no. Strictly here for the people, the marina and the live aboard community. Live aboard? People living on boats here? Yes, we have 88 live aboard boats here in the marina. But only for part, like they don't live year round. They live here year round, yes. Most of them do. If this doesn't, this water doesn't freeze then? It does, but we put bubblers in and, and ice heaters. The boats are insulated. There's a method for living on a boat in the winter times. Is it different from the other two marinas? Oh, yes. In what way? Well, there's no service here. We don't have any technicians that are on our staff. We don't take care of the, the physical property of the boats. We take care of the physical property of the marina. It's strictly a marina. You've got a place to put your boat. That's it. That's it, yes. Do you mind that simplicity? Do you miss more complex operations? This is fine because there's a lot of moving parts. There's new pieces of the marina being installed right now as we speak. There's planning for the switchover from the old to the new, and there's planning for the future for, with, with new access points, new restaurants, new uh, slips for, for the boats. It sounds like an exciting time to be here. I think it is. I think it is. This is going to be, this will be one of the premier marinas on the East Coast when it's completed. Do you, do you look at this position as something you're doing until the point that they're done with all this renovation and it's a fait accompli? Or are you looking to, depending on what management does, but looking to stay here and, and make it kind of the the crowning jewel of your career? A little of both. See how it goes. Are you enjoying it? Yes. Better than being retired and driving an Uber? Yeah, much better. <laughs>